Definitely. Um, so when we're talking about, um, while we're talking about money, let's uh, talk about the Federal Reserve. Um, they were, you know, and the TARP and all the bailouts and all this. Um, so what do you think? Uh, do you think that uh, TARP should have happened in the first place? Uh, do you think um, uh, those businesses should have been allowed to fail or like uh, all of them? Uh, or do you think they were really systemic and they should have been kept up? Um, what, what's your philosophy on all that? I'm a free market guy. I, I believe that if a business is too big to fail or too big to bail, I mean, it's just, again, I go back to the fact, the basic fact that it's your money, it's our money, it's the taxpayer's money, it's not the government's money. I'm a free market guy. I, I believe that if a business goes out of it goes out, goes under. There's 10, 15 businesses right behind them, private enterprises, entrepreneurs, ready to step in and take up the slack. Right. Th that was an opportunity for people to come up with some creative solutions. And uh, instead, we spent a huge amount of money bailing out um, companies that might not have need to be, to be bailed out. We have a $13 trillion deficit in this country. Just to give everybody an idea what, 13, what a trillion is, if I gave you a trillion dollars and I said, Josh, go out and spend this trillion dollars, will you? But only spend a dollar a second. You know how long it would take you to spend a trillion dollars? Probably a few months or something. 31,000 years. What? Yeah. Wow. That's how, that gives you an idea of what a trillion dollars is, and we have a $13 trillion deficit in this country. So we have a huge deficit that has to be taken care of, and we have a spending problem. You just, you just brought up one of, the, um, one of the big issues, and that's TARP, and that was a big, big spending um, binge right there. Right. I mean, if, th if those businesses do did go out of business, uh, businesses could have taken their place. They would have taken legit, the slack. Legit businesses that weren't, you know, taking people's money in. There's all kinds of banks, solvent banks around that, um, that, that could have taken up the slack for the, for the big ones who were in trouble right. from bad loans um, that were made. Right. Absolutely. Um, so with that um, knowledge in mind, what do you think about the Fed? Do you should they get more power, less power? Should they stay the same? What, what do you think of the Federal Reserve at this point? Well, it, it kind of goes along with my philosophy of, um, of um, entrepreneurship and uh, limited government, that I think all government should, should be limited to what the constitutional powers are. Right. They have to be limited. Uh, federal, the federal government should be limited to what their powers are, and they have to be watched. Um, it's a huge organization. The federal government is huge. The Federal Reserve is huge. Right. It served its purpose um, uh, for a while, and, uh, but still it has to be watched, and uh, just like any other um, organization in the government. Right, definitely. Um, uh, I think there's a lot of power in the Federal Reserve. There's, um, you know, it has unlimited power in a way because they're, they're not checked by Congress at all. And that's the one thing that I'm worried about is um, what's going on with our currency. It, it's the lifeblood of the economy, if you will. And I'm worried about um, where we're going with that because, um, you know, it's like you said, the federal deficit is ex exorbitant and um, it, Congress doesn't really do anything about it. I, that's my problem. Right. There's a spending problem. I mean, if I'm elected to Congress, I don't, I, I realize that the solution to a lot of these problems aren't too complicated. You tax people less and you don't spend as much. Right. And, and that brings down the deficit and it solves some of the spending problem. Uh, you know, we don't have to print money all the time to, uh, to bail out uh, big businesses. Right. Yeah, I mean, um, if we were to uh, tax less, how would we uh, pay off the deficit? Well, again, that goes back to, to uh, the free market solutions. If, if you tax people less, they go out, spend money, and uh, obviously they're taxed on, on that, uh, the Bush-Reagan theory. You give people more money, they spend money, 
they create jobs, those people pay taxes, and, uh, and it did at that time. It brought down the national deficit. And it's not complicated, and it worked, and it should work again. Okay. Um, so uh, there, there are a lot of people that are worried about uh, the Arizona uh, bill uh, that was passed in Arizona. <laughs> um, so, you know, because the federal government isn't really doing anything about the borders, and so it's causing a problem in Arizona, and, um, you know, a lot of people are worried about the immigration, and um, it's theoretically rampant. Uh, what's your position on what Arizona did and what the federal government isn't doing? I believe that our immigration and a smart immigration policy is vital to this country. We, we need border security. Border security is vital to our national defense and our national security. Illegal immigrants, no, no matter what reason they snuck into this country, are wrong for avoiding our uh, for avoiding the legal process, and they're really disrespecting us as a nation. Uh, if you went into another country and stayed there illegally, you see what would happen to you. Uh, other countries don't tolerate illegal immigration, and neither should we. It's as simple as that. The American taxpayer is paying entirely too much for, um, for illegal immigrants, and it, it has to stop. Right. Uh, uh, my opponent, uh, John Tierney, and Nancy Pelosi may think I'm a mean uh, person for, for wanting to secure our borders, but I'm not, because that is vital. Border security is vital to our national interest and national security. Right. Um, and, and, and just let me say, it wasn't... I've been taught that, you know, you have to treat uh, people fairly in order to get respect. and. It's my life experiences and values that also tell me that you have to um, also keep your word when you give, give your word on something. Several years ago, our government, the people in Washington, promised us a fence along the border with Mexico. It's time for the government to keep the promise, their promise and build that fence. When uh, I, I was watching a video about that fence at one point, and, uh, I guess it was really easy for them to dig under the fence and then uh, s basically sneak in through a hole. Uh, so it's like not like, I mean, it's really tall, but it's not dug into the ground type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it, is the government efficient enough to actually create a fence? Well, obviously, if you're going to put up a fence, you're going to have to put up a fence that, that is, that's effective and, and people can't dig under. I mean, I don't think that's a huge problem to uh, put a fence in that people can't dig under. But, I mean, just a simple analogy. If, if you wanted to keep somebody out of your yard, you put a fence around it. I mean, it tells people, this is the border. You don't go beyond here. And if you do, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, again, it's time, f it's time for people to respect our laws and processes. There's a lot of people that follow the laws. There are a lot of people that follow the processes. They're standing in line to come into this country the right way. And we're doing them a disservice by allowing people in here illegally. I admit, I'm, I'm sure you have too, plenty of people who want to come into this country and they're doing it the right way. And, there is, and this country is not against um, immigration at all. Right. Uh, there's a lot of fine people who came into this country right. the right way and they contribute to the society and they contribute to the economy and they raise their families and they're good citizens. But people who sneak in here illegally are doing something wrong and it has to be stopped. Um, well with that uh, there's th also the argument uh, that people come in here and abuse the system, if you will, uh, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, that kind of thing. And it, it also contributes to the national debt. Uh, what's your actual position on those issues? Uh, you mean as far as illegal immigrants getting benefits? Um, that plus the, that system is, uh, itself, uh, it, it, it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, I don't, it, a lot of people make that argument. Yeah. Uh, well, as far as uh, anybody that's here illegally and hasn't paid into the system doesn't, doesn't deserve a dime right. to, um, I mean, it's you and me and our parents and grandparents. They, they worked hard and they contributed to the system 
and it's for the people who contributed to the system um, to use as uh, it has been used anyways in the past as a safety net for people who might have a, uh, a serious disability. You know, they've, they've worked hard and they, they get injured or they have a heart attack or something in Social Security. As there are folks like your grandparents maybe who worked 30 or 40 years and contributed to the system and they took money out of their back pocket, gave it to the government. The government promised them um, some small payback uh, at the end when, when they're going to retire. And, and they have every reason to expect um, something in return.